Hi and good day to you. So today I'm doing a video on multinormal logistic regression. Um, wanted to get my head around how to do regression where the endpoint wasn't a classification of yes or no. As you can see here, we've still got the sigmoid function up in up front and center, uh, which is really good for yes or no because it saturates at zero and one quite readily, um, but not so good if you wanted to do a, a classifier where the output wasn't just a yes or no, it was which of these labels should I choose. So today I'm going to try and look at some wine data. Unfortunately, I don't get to drink wine with this, but I'm going to try and predict the type of wine, uh, one, two or three, which I think is white, red and rosé, but I don't know. Uh, not by drinking it, not by tasting it, but by the data set that you ha I have in front of you, and um, which is in available in the data.rattle uh, library. Um, let's just show you what it, that, that, that spelling looks like. If you want to follow along, uh, libraries are rattle.data and library deeper B L Y R. And if you remember, we talked about the sigmoid function. Well, it's a, it's an explanation of what that looks like. You can remember it was one divided by one plus the negative value of x uh, evaluated by the Euler's numbers expression. So when we're doing a multinormal logistic regression, if I had four labels of flat, house, bungalow, hall, and I had a big building, because the way the uh, logistic regression and sigmoid function works, if you may try to make four different models that predict whether one of those labels, every single one of those labels it, uh, was applicable to a given point of data, you could end up with two positives. You could end up with that it's both a hall and a barn. Well, that's not very useful. So this is where we use the softmax function. And the softmax function looks like this. So it's Julia's number divided by the sum of all the values in the vector Julia's number. So see here, I'm going to look at Z. So it's going to evaluate every single one of those number and not only give the Julia's number for the number itself, but divide it by the sum of all the Julia's number in the same vector. So you can imagine these are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different uh, classifications it could be. And this is how the, the number in each of these points is how certain we are. Um, that it's that individual classification. Now, putting it through the softmax function, it normalizes it quite nicely. And as I said to you previously, the, you, the way you need to think about the sigmoid function is it's about making the output follow the normal rules that we um, expect and associate with percentages and risk. So what the softmax function is, it takes a bunch of assessments of individual classifiers and joins them up. So it, it points out the four as the highest value, but doesn't um, uh, but doesn't completely knock out the chance that it could be one of the values that is registered at three. So it includes the right level of linear, uh, non linearity into your data. It creates this sort of uh, you know, this the, the, the sort of squiggy line that we talked about with the sigmoid function that, that uh, ac accounts for recursion in probability while normalizing all that value across the whole vector so you don't get this situation where it, it gives you two predictions as being the prediction you're going to go with. Um, as, and you can see that be by the sum, Euler's number of the, the values. 
So I get to now uh, predict what type of wine the data is uh, using a multinomial logistic regression. The first thing I need to do is I need to set a, in, a baseline and I'm going to choose free. Now, if I then create my model, I need to bring in the library nnet. So you actually need free libraries today. And I'm going to create the model, call it multinom.fit. And the function to use is multinom. You put in the type that you're trying to predict. So I'm predicting whether it's one, two or three. Uh, I'm going to use alcohol and color. And I'm, I'm leaving a little bit of a, uh, I'm removing, I'm removing the, uh, the, the change in the X value that, it, that, that normally occurs with this because I didn't really need it. Um, it's converged and it tells me there. Now this is where I really don't like the way R does this. If I do the summary, it's because it's all set centered around um, free being the output, it will do things where it goes into negative numbers and goes into values over one. And the values over one is meant to be that there's a reduction, but I don't really get that. I, I, I much prefer I actually prefer the way I've seen it taught with how it's used for artificial intelligence where um, there's an output row of neurons and those neurons are then fed into the softmax function exactly as how I did there. And that gives you the, the percentage in each of those neural output neurons is this, you know, predictive value. I actually prefer that. I don't like this, but I kind of... I kind of get what they're doing in a sort of roundabout way that they're, they're trying to take one output and turn it into three, two, and one are, um, are in a hierarchy between themselves uh, and the computers put them in that hierarchy. I don't really know how the multi logistic regression that works in R would fare with... Um, non-hierarchical values where there is not no kind of concept of this is bigger than that but they're different I know a, um, a neural network would deal with that quite easily I don't know how well the uh, regression version using that the um, that output function would behave um, I, I'm not going to go into much more of that I, I, I dislike it but I, I kind of can deal with it but moving on from my mini rant, my mini diversion, um, I can still use this for predictions, and it's still it is still relatively understandable. You know, an increase in color increases the chance it's going to be a number two by fourteen percent. Um, the increase in in um, in color does not mean that it's going to be. Um, 200% increase but that this is the where I say the hierarchy breaks down for you know I don't, I don't you know because it's one it, it's it's turned it's turned um I think if it, it what it is is that if it's above one that's a reduction in the chance it's going to be that don't like the way R does that like I say I like, prefer to think of softmax as a vector um but you still it still works. You can still do a probability table, and you'll see here I've got the top six values. It's predicting, and as you know, the top six in this data are all ones. So let's see how well it did. I predicted the first one would be a one with sixty seven percent. Kind of thought that it would be if it could have been a three at twenty four. Fifty percent the chance it's going to be a one. Uh, 38 and 11 for free and because I've done this before it gets them all right in terms of if you chose the right probability apart from number 4 where it gets it wrong and thinks it should be a 3 it's part of the reason I think that 1, 2 and 3 are some combination of white, red, rosé um, that it gets that wrong but 
don't know for sure. Uh, anyway, there you go. Multinominal logistic regression, able to uh, predict multiple labels all at the same time. Could be useful where in businesses because you have all these Excel drop downs where it can be any, a list of different values. And if you wanted to create a model to predict in what group that value should, that, that particular value should look at, this is what the softmax function is for. Um, I liked it, I learned a little bit. Uh, I sort of understood what the softmax function is from playing around with it in AI, but until I actually encountered this particular explanation of it, I always sat there going, I don't know really what that's for. You know, I don't know why you'd want to do that. And this 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 sort of nailed at home exactly what that function was for and how how actually useful it was. Because I knew this is what it did, but I didn't really I didn't really sort of like associate the two of, oh, you have cases where you have multiple things that a given object could be and you want to pick pick the most likely. So this has been useful for me. I hope it's been useful for you. Have a good day and a good night. Bye.